first half of our chat, we were talking about um, anchoring our trains. And so finding some ways to, um, you know, to anchor, to anchor ourselves again so that we already know what to do if things get stressful so that you can, you know, kind of calm yourself before, before things get too stressful. Um, I wanted to show you really quickly, this has nothing to do with the chat. It has, let's see, um, Carol Lou, it is hashtag, oh, and Lynn just did, it is hashtag anchor your train, A-N-C-H-O-R-Y-O-U-R-T-R-A-I-N. Um, this has nothing to do with the chat, but the produce guy brought us pink, he brought us pink, pine, a pink pineapple this week, so I froze some of it, and I'm adding body light, uh, body armor light coconut to it. So this is just, this is frozen pink pineapple that the produce guy brought us. Um, and I'm drinking it with uh, body armor light coconut. Because I have had a ton of water already today. So here at the halfway mark, everybody go ahead and get your sip of water. Now's a good time to get in some of that water. Um, so here in the second half, we have been talking a lot about produce. We've been talking a lot about gardens the last couple of weeks. We've been talking a lot about um, harvesting things. While I have you, while the internet is letting me have you, if I asked you this time of year, you know, if you're the person that's planted a garden, if it's one of your friends, if it's a neighbor, if it's a family member, shout out a couple, while I have you on the internet, shout out a couple of things that you think, oh Lord, they've planted blah, blah, blah again, and here they come. What is, what is something that everybody, whether a beginner gardener or a pro gardener, what's something that everybody always has a ton of? And I'm going to call it a bumper crop. So what are things that people end up with a bumper crop of? And you know, and you know when they've planted it because here they come and they've got baskets and bags and everything of it and they're trying to give it away. So hopefully I still got a few of you there that can actually, um, that can actually hear me. What are some bumper crop things y'all can think of? So there's a, there are a few things that every year I think, oh golly, yeah. Carol, who says tomatoes and zucchini, you're exactly right. Those are two of the top ones. Marianne says zucchini. We had a neighbor years ago that um, takes a zucchini. We had a, a and hello tag, you came just in time because the internet's been really iffy with a storm that we're having here. Mary says zucchini, Lynn says zucchini. We had a neighbor, um, that we used to live next door to. We only lived there for a couple of years, but she planted, I think it was like 20, 18 or 20 cucumber plants every year. And Sherry says tomatoes, cucumber plants every year. And, um, she, um, she didn't like cucumbers. Like she didn't eat them. And then she found out that I liked cucumbers. So every day when I came home from work, yep, Karen says cubes. Every day when I came home from work, there would be three zucchini sitting on top of our, um, sitting on top of our garbage cans <laughs> waiting, waiting for me. Um, and I ate three zucchini every, every day that year or that couple of years that we lived there. And Lisa says squash and jalapenos. Okay. So y'all have hit, hit it right on that. You just hit it all over. So zucchini, yellow squash, which, you know, technically is, it's not zucchini, but zucchini, yellow squash, cucumbers, and tomatoes. That's what, those are four of those things that people who plant either a hobby garden or just plant a regular garden, you get tons of them. I mean, you almost don't have to do anything. If it rains a little bit, you're gonna have a ton of them. So we're gonna make something tonight with, I did get um, two more packs of Cut to Carb. So the very sweet people at Cut to Carb have asked me to do a couple more recipes and to look at some of the ones that they've just recently posted. Um, we're gonna be using Cut to Carb tonight. Um, you, oh my gosh, Carol Lou says there's a, there's a leave zucchini on your neighbor's door day. That is hilarious. And you need to let me know when that is. Uh, Alyssa and Mon are they're doing quite well. We don't only have flowers. We don't have any zucchini yet. Um, but if you do um, purchase any cut to carb, you can order these on their website. It is, their website is, hold on. I had it here just a second ago. Yeah, that's what I thought. Cutducarb.com, C-U-T-D-A-C-A-R-B.com. Um, and the way this is made, it is a flatbread. It's not a tortilla, but this is a this is a flatbread. But the way that it's made, it's very thin, cooks up very well. You don't have to cook it, um, but it is. Let's 
um, vegan, kosher, thank you, Debbie, for posting, posting that, soy-free, dairy-free, nut-free, it is um, one sheet is two Weight Watchers points. So I don't think anybody's getting this for zero points. So one should be two, but this is huge. When I pull this out, you're gonna see how big this is. Um, it is 0.5 grams of fat for the entire thing. And this is huge. I don't, I don't know that you could eat the whole thing, maybe. I don't know, maybe. I usually end up eating about half or a fourth of one. Um, the total carbohydrates for the whole thing is 14, but it also has five grams of dietary fiber. So just a couple of notes on this. Um, as soon as you get these, like when they arrive, you need to go ahead and pop them in the refrigerator. If you are not going to be using them pretty soon, like within a week or so, um, let me keep them in the refrigerator, but you can freeze them. So you just want to leave them flat. If you can, if you can leave them flat like this and put them in the freezer and then let them um, fall out before you use them again. And hello, Janelle, hello. You missed all the fun with the internet going in and out with the storm. Hopefully we're done. You do want to keep it sealed at all times because you don't want them to dry out. Okay, so let's pull one of these out. Oh, and it's nine grams of net carbs because of the fiber. So these are pretty big. If you wanted to make like a big pizza, you know, you could um, see this is pretty big. So each one of these flatbread sheets, you know, is a pretty good size. Um, for what we're going to make tonight, we're going to cut it into, I'll tell you what, we're just going to cut it into two. I was going to cut it into four, but we're just going to cut it into two. Um, I'm just going to use a sh you know, a sharp knife, and I know you all can't see me cutting, but I'm going to use a sharp knife and just cut it literally into two. You can also use clean, sharp scissors to cut this, um, or a pizza cutter works great. Um, you know, you can just lay it down on, you know, whatever you're going to cut it on, roll your pizza cutter across it, and it, you know, and that works great. We're going to add to these, and I wish I could tilt the camera down so you all could see what I'm doing a little bit better, but what I'm going to add to these, um, we're going to make a um, bumper crop hot pockets. Okay, wait, Carol Lou has a great question. Carol Lou wants to know what they're made out of. They are made out of filtered water, unbleached flour, whole wheat flour, psyllium husk, salt, and yeast. They do contain wheat, okay? So they do contain wheat, and great. We're gonna have slow internet again here for just a second. Um, I do wanna um, point out one thing, which has a little bit to do with what we're doing tonight. If you're gonna roll, if you're gonna roll it up, you want to roll it on the long side. And I will risk rip, ripping one of these just to show you all. If you're gonna roll it up, if you're gonna roll it up, you want to roll it this way, okay? So like if you're gonna if you're gonna use one of these to make it into some you know some kind of a roll, you want to roll it long ways like that. You don't want to roll it the short side. If you roll it, it's already doing it. So if you roll it short side, they they tend to tear. Okay. So anyway, that was just one. That was just a little tip. Actually, you know what? Now that we have this out, we'll just go ahead and make four of these. I have plenty of stuff to make for the four of them. So again, you can just use a sharp knife and a cutting board and score that, and it will pop right apart. I mean, look how thin. These are like paper thin. They are so thin. Okay, what we're gonna make with these tonight, again, they're bumper crop hot pockets. So we're gonna make some hot pockets that you can eat now, you can eat later, um, but we're gonna use up some of these bumper crops. So what we'll, be, what we'll be doing with this, we'll be using zucchini, yellow squash, tomatoes, and cucumber. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some either, um, we're gonna take some either uh, part skim, and if, if you've just joined us, we are having major problems with the internet tonight with the internet coverage because there are some storms rolling through the area. Nothing I can do about it, but it is um, it is recording on the camera, so we'll get Casey to use that. But we have, and Carol is right, this does remind you of the Joseph Lavash um, bread tortillas. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use either, you can use either um, part skim or um, you can use part skim or, or if you can find it, I haven't found it in a long time, or fat-free um, ricotta cheese. You can use one of the two of those and I'll show you what I'm, I'll hold this up here in a second and show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon on half of each one of these. And you don't wanna go all the way to the edge because you're gonna kinda tuck that in. We're gonna wrap it like a package. 
So we're gonna do that on about half. And this is actually technically from an old Weight Watchers recipe that my mom used to make. Um, and I'm planning on making some of the ones like she and I used to make. But again, it's about a half, I mean, it's about a tablespoon of either part skim, can y'all see that? Either part skim or um, fat-free ricotta cheese, depending, you know, just whatever you have. And you're just gonna spread it on there. You're gonna spread it on there and don't put it on half of it and don't put it all the way to the edge. Then we're going to take some, I have already made, so earlier tonight, I took zucchini, yellow squash, and cucumbers, and I sliced them pretty thin. You know, they're not super thin, but I sliced them pretty thin. And then I put them in the air fryer. I spritzed them with a little bit of olive oil, and then I put them in the air fryer on um, 260 degrees. Ooh, yeah, Sandra says you can put peanut butter and a banana on there and roll it up. That would be really good. I did this on, um, sorry, I'm trying to find a cucumber. There's a cucumber. I did this on um, 260 degrees in the, so I spritzed these with a little bit of um, um, olive oil spray, and then I and did some nutritional yeast, and I put them in the, yeah, you can cook cucumbers. I mean, I don't cook them often, but I wanted them to be inside this. If you were gonna do this fresh, like if you weren't gonna heat this up, you could totally just stick them in there. But I wanted this to be, this is gonna be a heated sandwich. Um, but so this is cucumbers, yellow squash, and zucchini. Um, sliced pretty thin. I, I sliced the cucumbers a little bit thicker because they are because they dry up a little bit more. They kind of shrink up a little bit more. Um, and then again, a little bit of nonstick spray or some, a little bit of olive oil spritz, and then some nutritional yeast on top of that. And I cooked it on 260 degrees for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay some of these out. On my cut to carb flatbread. So remember these are bumper crops. So these are things that, you're, that you have plenty of. Uh, I don't know. Carol wants to know. Remember, I get to lick my fingers because I'm eating these. Carol wants to know if you can use the homemade fat-free cream cheese instead of the ricotta cheese. I'm thinking probably not. Um, I don't know. Ricotta cheese and cream cheese are two different things. Maybe. I don't know. You could try it. So this is what it looks like on the, on the, um, on the flatbread. So this is a half of one of the flatbreads. Hopefully y'all can see that. That's a half of one of the cut to carb flatbreads. I spread on half of it, I spread a tablespoon of um, uh, part skim ricotta cheese and you can use fat free if you can find it. And then I have some of my bumper crop vegetables on there. This time it is zucchini, yellow squash, cucumber, and I'm gonna put some sun-dried tomatoes on there and we'll talk about how to make the sun-dried tomatoes while these are cooking, but look how pretty that is. So I'm gonna put just a few little sun-dried tomatoes on here. So these were um, those little grape tomatoes. Those are perfect for sun-drying. We're gonna get a couple of these going and then I'll make two more. And I have a skillet just off the camera over here heating up. And it's funny, I'm not a huge fan of just like um, tomatoes, tomatoes, just like, you know, tomatoes just to be tomatoes, but I love these little sun-dried grape tomatoes. Okay, I'm going to spritz just a little bit of olive oil in my pan, which has been heating up, and then I'm going to fold these in. I'm just going to fold them in side to side, and I'll, I think I'll pick this up so y'all can see it. So you're gonna fold them in side to side. And you're making like a little package and I'm gonna tuck in from the bottom. So hopefully y'all can see this. And then I'm gonna tuck in the top. Cause we're making just a little hot pocket. 
And if the if the cut to carb or the tortilla or whatever you're using, if it starts to dry out while you're doing this, like if you're taking too long like I am, um, you can wet, you can wet your fingers and just wet it a little bit and it'll help them stick together. So see, I've made like a little, it's made like a little sandwich. So I'm gonna put this in there folded side down so that that can start coming together and I'm gonna fold the next one. I may have overstuffed these just a little bit. But you just fold the two side, the two long sides in, fold the bottom up a little bit, and then fold the top down. You can tuck it under if it's a little bit longer. You can squish it down a little bit if that makes you feel better, but you're just making like a little pocket. So you're making a little, a little pocket here. And then I'm gonna put that face down and let that start cooking. And we're basically just gonna let these toast a little bit. So I've got it on medium. I have my skillet on medium heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and get two more of these ready while we're waiting on that to cook. And then I'll tell you how to make the tomatoes. So Debbie asked if that was my mother's um, end of season tomato recipe. It is not her end of season tomato recipe. And thank you for remembering that. But her end of season tomato recipe um, is really good. It's, um, you can use regularly, regular size tomatoes, or you can use, um, she always used like her leftover beefsteak tomatoes and, you know, whatever kind she, uh, big boys or whatever kind it was that she was growing. And when they get kind of, you know, blanky and scrawny and, you know, spotted, whatever, at the end of the season, then she would take, um, she would take some olive oil and some seasoning and cook them in the oven. And I love making them in the air fryer. Of course, she didn't have an air fryer, but she she would cook them in the oven. And they were so, and again, I would never just take a tomato and eat it. Oops. I would never just take a tomato and eat it, but she, um, they taste like candy. I mean, it was, it was weird. It's the weirdest thing. Okay, so let me get a little bit more ricotta on here. And this is a recipe that Jessica will be posting, you know, hopefully later in the week. And I have promised her that I will concentrate on getting recipes done. We'll see if these need to flip yet. I have promised her that I will concentrate on getting some of these recipes done because she's getting really tired of not, of not having them. Not quite yet. Give it just a couple more minutes. And maybe don't overstuff them. So I have overstuffed them and this one's starting to come apart, but you get the idea. Um, yep, yeah, and Debbie says those are so good. They are, they're so good. Okay, let me try not to overstuff this one because I definitely overstuffed those. But it doesn't matter because they are gonna be so yummy. And again, this is a great way to use up all those extra vegetables out of the garden. Um, so if your neighbor does participate in put zucchini on your neighbor's porch day or whatever it was called, if they do participate in that, fine. You can just make some of these. So I've got my part skim ricotta cheese on here. I'm gonna fold up the bottom, fold in the sides. And then fold down the top like a little package. And again, if your cut to carb or your tortilla or whatever you're working with, if it starts to dry out a little bit, just, just dampen your fingers with a little water. And they'll stick together. Let's see how these are doing. And then if you go ahead and make extras of these, you can put them in. Um, you can put them in the freezer. Just put them like in a little, um, like in a little freezer bag, and you can individually freeze them. Now, my mom used to put them in aluminum foil, so she made a sweet version of this, and um, with the ricotta cheese, way, way, way back in the day on Weight Watchers, and she would she put them in aluminum foil and baked them in the oven. You can totally do that too, and then she would stick those in a sandwich bag and put them in the freezer, and then when she needed a little sweet treat, you know, because back then Wet Washers was so, um, 
I don't know, it was so strict on what you had and how much you had and when you had it and how many you could have a day and on and on and on and on, on that um, she would keep these, the sweet version that she made, she would keep them in her um, freezer so that she had, you know, so that she had a sweet, you know, so she had something sweet to eat. Okay, a couple of these are almost ready. So let's talk about, put that fourth one in here. Let's talk about how to make these tomatoes real quick. So these tomatoes are um, the little grape tomatoes and we had a ton of these. And Alyssa and I have another grape tomato plant. These were actually out of the produce box that we got from Knox Produce Box a couple of weeks ago. And he brought me two gallon, um, gallon zippered bags of these two weeks ago. So it was a lot, there was a lot of them. So this is what's left of that second gallon. We, the first gallon we were eating in salads, we were eating them on like um, pizza, you know, like pizza things, all kinds of things. So this is what's left of the second gallon. And yes, I'm sorry, Carol, you can't see me doing it because it's over here. But yes, I'm flipping, I'm flipping the Hot Pockets over in the pan. And again, I think because I took so much time to do this and because this has been open over here, um, probably would have worked better and I'll do it for the recipe if I had gone ahead and you know wet the corners just so they would stick together a little bit more but it's okay it's live and you know what the internet's not glitching anymore so I'm just happy to be here um, but anyway so you literally all you do you don't need to put anything on them you just cut them in half so it is a it's a little grape you can do it with cherry tomatoes too it's a little grape or cherry tomato cut in half and seriously, the internet just glitched. Is it because I said something? Is it because I said it didn't? Is that why it's doing this? Hmm. Not funny internet, not funny at all. Here's one of the Hot Pockets. We're gonna cut into one here in a few minutes. Let me flip these other two. But the tomatoes, can you hear them when I'm flipping them? That one had a little ricotta leakage, so the ricotta is sizzling. But the tomatoes you just cut, you just take the little Roma, they're the little bitty tomatoes, little Roma or little um, cherry tomatoes, something like that, a little tiny grape tomato, and cut them in half. And if you're gonna do them in the air fryer, put them in the air fryer on in a single layer. So don't let them stack up on top of each other, put them in a single layer. This is one of those um, or patience, it's a, it's, a, it's a practice in patience, but it's also not really because you can walk off if you do the air fryer. If you do these in the oven, it's going to take almost the same amount of time, but you kind of got to kind of got to hang out, you know, because it's the oven. Also, if you do these in the air fryer, then you're not going to heat your um you're not going to heat your kitchen up as much. And remember next month we're going to be talking about um uh you know, ways to save money because we're everything's more expensive right now. Like everything. Karen told me how much she spent at the grocery store yesterday and I was like, yeah. Um but it's a way to keep your kitchen from being so hot too if you use your air fryer, if you have one instead of your oven. But these, in, cut them in half, put them in a single layer in your air fryer, and here's where the patience comes in, two hours, okay? And you're gonna have to go in two cycles because your air fryer's not gonna let you cook these for two hours. So you put them on 200 degrees. I didn't put any seasoning on them yet. I didn't put any oil on them, nothing. Just let them go. Um, but two hours, you're gonna put your air fryer on 200 degrees, and you're gonna cook these for two hours. Oh, yep, got some ricotta on the bottom. But you're gonna cook them for two hours. So I put it on 200 degrees and let it go for 60 minutes. Then I pulled it open and looked at them. Yep, another 60 minutes. Put them back in, 200 degrees and another 60 minutes. You can put them, so these are, these are sun-dried tomatoes now. You can put them in the refrigerator for like up to a week. If you're not going to use them in a week, which model I'll be gone within a week. If you're not going to use them in a week, you need to freeze them, okay? And you can you can freeze them, but don't don't leave them in the refrigerator for more than a week because they're going to get janky. If you wanted to um, if you wanted to store them another way, you can you can do it with a lot of olive oil, but I you know what's the point? You might as well have just you know gone to the store and bought them if you're going to do if you're going to use a lot of olive oil. Okay, so all this was is this is two, I made four of these, and I'll show you what they look like. And it's raining again, so the internet's gonna be messed up again. 
but I made four of these and this is with, so I apologize again, the internet, it, I can hear it, it is pouring again. So the internet's gonna keep messing up, but this is four Pop Pockets. Um, I'm gonna eat one of them tonight and I can put the others in the refrigerator and you can just microwave them. They're not as crispy when you, re, when you reheat them, um, but they are just as delicious or you can freeze them. And if you freeze them, freeze them in little individual bags or you can wrap them up maybe in some wax paper or something so that you can go back, um, you know, you can go back and pull them out individually. So here it is. So this is my little hot pocket. So it has, it's the cut to carb bread, um, uh, zucchini and yellow squash and cucumbers cooked in the air fryer and I'll we'll post that later and then some air fryer sun-dried tomatoes and I'm gonna cut one of them in half just so you can see what it looks like on the inside so that you can Carol you can do them in the air fryer but this but it dries out so much I wanted to do them in the pan so that's what the inside oh you reheat them i'm sorry yes you can reheat them in the air fryer that would be perfectly fine so that's what the inside of it looks like so now it's like a little it's just it's literally a hot pocket so i'm going to try this one with some tzatziki and it's got the um part skim ricotta or fat free if you can find it yum but here it is with a little tzatziki so these are fresh out of the garden vegetables things that are a bumper crop that you're going to have way too many of Mmm. Mmm. My gosh, that's so good. Mmm. And an awesome and fantastic way to get your vegetables in. So, I hope that you will try these bumper crop hot pockets. Um, and Sylvia, it just when you put it in with the um, with the zucchini and the yellow squash. It just tastes like a cucumber. I mean, it's, yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing fancy or exciting. It's nothing exotic. It literally just tastes like a cucumber. It tastes like a warm cucumber. Um, yes, and it's a, be an awesome way. Carolou says that would be a good way to use up some herbs too. That would be a fantastic way to use up some herbs. Um, so a little bit of cut to carb, some um, low or uh, part skim ricotta cheese, whatever you got out of your garden, whatever your neighbor left for you to eat out of their garden, whatever they gave you on National Leaves and Zucchini on your neighbor's um, porch day. But I think we have risked the odds enough. I'm gonna go ahead and start um, wrapping up and go ahead and close up, but I hope y'all will try that recipe later. I hope you'll find ways to use up what you grew in your garden, what you can get at the local farmer's market, um, things that your neighbor left on your garbage can. I hope that you can, I hope you can find ways to use that. And I hope that I will see you all again next week and that it is not storming and that everything is lovely and fantastic. Um, but you all have a great week. And um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope that you will go ahead and let that next video roll over and go ahead and watch it. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that little um, subscribe button and go ahead and click the bell so you'll see the next, um, so you'll be notified the next time we have a video. But you all have an amazing week and I will see you next time. Good night.